So handling paginated lists in Apollo is quite tricky. So in this video, I'm gonna try sharing some of my knowledge to make this a little less difficult. In particular, we're gonna be taking a look at the connection directive, uh, and this allow us to update the cache with paginated lists. In our case, the one we're gonna be looking at is how to remove an item from a paginated list. So here is the working example that I'm gonna show you how to do. Uh, in this case, I want to be able to remove items at the beginning of the list or if I paginate through a list a little bit. So this is an infinite scrolling list and be able to delete anywhere in the list without any problems. Uh, if you're curious how we created this infinite list or how to go about doing that with Apollo, I'll link a previous video where I made this. Uh, but before I start the video on how to use the connection directive, I wanted to also just follow up on one thing. I wanted to show the loading indicator in the last video when we created this infinite list. And uh, I forgot about being able to go to the network tab of the Chrome inspector. And we can toggle on a, th a slow 3G connection or uh, probably just fast 3G connection would work too. Um, and you can see the network requests spinning now as it is fetching it. And, uh, you know, you can just scroll down, see the loading ind indicator appear, load the data, and go through it. So I just want to let you guys know that's a uh, something that you can do. Also, something I wanted to mention that I forgot to in the last video as well is uh, we were rendering waypoints. We do not want to render a waypoint if there's not a next page. So I just added a condition here where I checked if we have a next page um, when rendering the waypoint. All right, so let's jump into the details now of how I was able to just delete items from this list uh, from the cache. So to start off with our query. So in my query here, I created a, or I added a directive called at connection. So this is something that I believe Apollo adds, or maybe it's a default GraphQL directive, I'm not quite sure, um, but we have access to it. And uh, how it works is we specify a key so this is just the name of the key that you want it in the Apollo cache. So I just called it books since this is a books query. Um, and that is pretty much it. So what that means now is it's going to ignore the variables, right? Or uh, the, I guess, parameters you'd call them that are being passed into the query when storing it in the cache. So if I change the cursor or I change the first, um, I'm gonna talk more about search query in the future, but the cursor or first, then uh, it's basically going to treat it all as a single cache item and store them in a single cache slot. So what that means is if I come over to my code and we look, I'm using a use remove book mutation. There's nothing special about it. All it calls is the use book, uh, or sorry, remove book mutation on the back end. And if I look at where I'm calling it, then notice I'm passing in the ID for the book I wanna remove. And then here is the update logic. So you'll notice here, I am not passing in the variables, right, that I want to be updated. So I pass in a variable of first of 50, but I'm not passing it in here when I'm reading from the cache. And that's because there is basically a single cache item and I read that cache item, it's gonna have the entire paginated list. So when I do this, this is gonna read in the entire paginated list into this data. So then I can write this back to the cache and I can just say, all I'm doing here is I'm filtering through the books list, right? And removing the item. So that's basically the gist of it. So this at connection directive puts everything into a single cached slot. Um, and we can grab that and put it back into that slot by filtering the data out. And this is us how we would remove it. Now this is basically the simple example where we have no variables that we care about uh, differentiating with, but a lot of times you're gonna have something that you care about changing. And so what I mean by that is, for example, I've used this before with a search. If we were to change any of the variables that we pass in here right now with the default setting of cache first, which is the fetch policy, uh, we're basically gonna hit the cache every single time. Uh, so that's a problem. And so let me show you what I mean by that first, and then we'll show you how you can solve that. So I'm going to just say use state here to create a value, or I'm gonna call it a search query. And I'm just gonna create an input at the top. This is gonna allow us to uh, 
update the search query. And as I type on this, I'm just going to update the search query. And I'm just going to pass this search query as a variable in here. So as you imagine, all the search query does is it goes and fetches uh, the value. Oh, and I should do, there we go, the initial value for this state. I want to be an empty string. Uh, basically, it just searches on the search query on the back end. If you don't supply a search query, it does not uh, grab anything. Or sorry, it grabs everything. Uh, okay, so we see this. Now, say, for example, I want to search for something that has a Z in it. Um, or maybe, you know, some other random combination. You saw there's a lag for a second there, I guess, while I was typing it hits the network each time, maybe. Uh, but either way, you'll notice that it's not searching well. And the reason for that is basically it just keeps hitting the cache each time because we have it all stored in the cache. So there is a few ways we can remedy this. By the way, let me show you that it is indeed the cache. If I say Z here as the initial search, notice there's fireworks as the first one. Give that a save. Uh, we see Simon as our first value there. So it's not that the search is broken. It's that we have a problem with caching. And that is because the default uh, fetch policy is cache first. And since we have everything in a single cache item, we can change this by using something like network only. So in this case, it's always going to hit the network and not look at the cache uh, to retrieve the value of it. And so that indeed does work. But this is kind of just avoiding the problem. Really, the problem is we're storing the cache in a single slot. We want to separate it based on some number of variables. In our case, really just search query. Um, so we can do that by using a parameter on the connection directive called filter. So here we can pass in all the variables that we, when we change them, we want them to be separated. So what I mean by that is when I have a search query, I want it to be split up. If I search for rice, I want that to be cached for the rice query as opposed to when I search for bacon. All right, so now that I've added this, Personally, with my thing, I just need to run yarn gen to uh, update the GraphQL types. All right, so uh, this is also, by the way, not going to work right away um, when we delete an item now. So let's take a look at this. Now when I search, it's going to go ahead and show the items here, but let's say I try deleting one like Fearless Hyena, nothing happens here. And if I look at the log, I don't know if we get an error. Yeah, we do go ahead and get error. And it says it cannot find the field books on object. And so basically what it's telling us is this object that it's talking about here, this is the cache. And we can see the cache here. It tells us there's a cache key for the search query empty string. There is a cache key for uh, books search query Z, but there is not one uh, for just books empty empty object um, and so you'll notice the reason why it's saying empty object is because we're not passing in any variables um, that's right here so when I try reading this query now I'm gonna need to have to pass in the search query and when I write the data I'm gonna have to pass in that search query but I did not have to pass in say the first or the cursor as that changes and as we paginate through. So if we say Z, delete this first guy, deletes just fine, and we can page through this. Well, I guess we don't have that many Zs. Let's switch to a, like A, that's a better letter, with more items, and then we're free to just delete those. And again, the items that we're deleting in the A search query will not affect the ones in the Z because they're in separate bins in the cache. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind. All right, so that is pretty much a simple introduction to the connection derivative, or sorry, directive, not derivative. Uh, so the basic gist of it is you add it on your query and it changes how it is stored in the cache. So if you just specify a key, uh, then it's gonna use that as the name in the cache and it's going to ignore all variables. So you can fetch that entire thing from the cache, um, no matter if the variables are different for them. 
um, and to be able to specify when you want it to differentiate between variables, you put it in the filter array. Now, personally, I haven't really tried this with multiple ones, but I believe you can just pass in. I can't imagine why else it would be an array. Uh, so there you go. Give it a try.